say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Greedy corporate mega stores, led by Walmart and Target, are pushing for a law in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. The Durbin Marshall Credit Card Bill would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, tell your lawmakers, hands off my rewards. Tell them to oppose the Durbin Marshall Credit Card Bill. A science story, huh? These NYU scientists, they I it felt, felt I this really right. I was so and I just thought, well, I had figured it, out. I it was that wrong. golden moment. Because science was on my side. Hey everyone, I'm Ben Lilly, and welcome to the Story Collider, where we bring you true personal stories about science. We have shows coming up in New York City, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Boston, and London. Go to storycollider.org for more info. This week's story is from Hilary Ray. It was recorded in February 2015 at Littlefield in Brooklyn. I'm scared of babies. I'm scared of their little fingers and the drool and the way that they just fixate on you even when you try to look away. (laughs) I've been scared of them ever since seeing Look Who's Talking as a kid. (laughs) And I have recurring nightmares about them ever since accidentally channel surfing to baby geniuses on TBS. (laughs) And I'm actually even more scared of giving real birth. If you give natural birth, your vagina rips open. If you have a C-section, they rip your intestines out and then put them back in. And whether or not you have a natural birth or a C-section, you always shit the bed. (laughs) I'm sort of generally scared of everything about the human body, but it's lessened since I started a job a few years ago. I'm a standardized patient. So I'm a medical actor. I am someone that acts out a character that has an ailment for medical students to help them figure out how to diagnose someone with a medical problem and how to interact with them interpersonally. There was a Seinfeld episode about it. He had jaundice and wanted gonorrhea for those Seinfeld fans. Um, I'm going to brag. I'm awesome at my job. I'm like one of the best standardized patients. When I had vaginitis, I, I killed. <laughs> I had lupus, and I rocked lupus so hard. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that if they had give Emmys for being a standardized patient when I played the suicidal teenager, I totally would have won an Emmy for it. I'm also really good at playing moms. I've been a mom whose son gave me diarrhea. Uh, I've been a mom whose baby is losing weight and they have to break the bad news to me. And I've also been a mom that has a muscle injury under the rib from vacuuming while carrying my two-year-old. But I'm not scared of being these kinds of moms with these kinds of babies because these babies don't exist at all. So it's actually kind of great. But a few months ago, I show up to work thinking that that day I was going to have an STD. And I get there, and my supervisor hands me the schedule. And he says, there's been a change, and that today I'm going to give birth. And I'm going to give birth three times. (laughs) And I'm thinking about this. And like the idea of giving fake birth is causing me so much more panic and anxiety than the idea of giving real birth or having a baby at all. And I'm just staring at my supervisor and I'm like, I have no other choice but to quit this job right now. And then I think about it some more. I'm like, I really need the money and they're giving us free lunch. So, okay, I'm going to give fake birth. So they bring us into the simulation lab, which is set up to look like a regular hospital room, but there's a two-way mirror on one side. And on the other side of the two-way mirror is a control room filled with these professors. And they're the professors of nursing students and medical students and their supervising residents that are all coming to this hospital room today to practice working as a team in a birthing unit. 
So I am there, and uh, my husband for the day, Mike, is there, and we're both strapped in with earpieces. So when we're doing our thing, the control room is actually going to be telling us what to do. And depending on how the students interact with each other and how they're handling the medical aspect of the situation, the professors can tell us different things to do. It's sort of like the medical student version of the Hunger Games. So. We are told that I am going to give fake birth and my baby is going to have shoulder distortia, which means that uh, tons of different things could possibly go wrong with the baby and with me. And they're also giving the option for something to go wrong with my husband, Mike. So behind a curtain on the floor is a simulation mannequin, Robo Mike, that if they need to, the students can go to town and work on him and resuscitate him. So that's the plan for the day. So I'm wearing bike shorts and a tank top and a hospital gown, and then somewhere in between, they've strapped on this full-term prosthetic uh, half torso, complete with a fake vagina, a fake uterus. There's um, rubber placenta inside, and I'm holding the top of my baby's legs as it's hanging upside down in the stomach. <laughs> and I'm responsible for pushing it out when I'm told. So that's all hidden, and then I'm lying in the bed, and there's sheets and blankets, so it just looks like I'm just there, pregnant lady. I am so overwhelmed by this situation. <laughs> no one has ever like stopped during this setup to be like, hey, Hillary, have you ever given, given birth before? <laughs> or are you aware of anything that happens during this whole experience? Or do you have enough acting skills to act this out with zero preparation? <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, and no, and I really want to leave the room. But before I have the chance to get up and distract myself, in my earpiece I hear, all right, the students are coming in. So I'm lying in the bed, Mike is holding my hand. He's actually so excited for this fake birth because his girlfriend gave real birth like the month before and so he's really into it and he's squeezing my hand. And as the students are coming in, he's like, you can do it, honey. Aren't you so excited to meet our little peanut? <laughs> And I'm just doing what I think is Lamaze breathing, but based on what I saw watching soap operas after school every day. And so in my ear, they're telling me just to answer the students' questions. So uh, the students are asking me questions. They ask me like, oh, how far along in the pregnancy are you? And I answer, uh, whatever the normal amount of time is for you to be pregnant. And they're like, oh, OK. And I'm like trying to field other questions. And, and as I'm sort of getting used to answering the questions in my ear, I hear, Hillary, all right, you're going to tell them that you think the baby's coming. You're ready. You're going to give labor. So I tell them that I think the baby's coming. and in, in my mind, my interpretation of giving labor is to just scream. So I scream. And in my ear, I hear laughter from the control room. And then I hear someone coaching me, and they're like, Hillary, imagine that there is a bowling ball going through your vagina. So I picture a bowling ball going through my vagina, and it like takes me into this extreme focus point. I'm in this like intensity zone where I want to believe that I'm actually giving birth. And so I go for it and I'm in the zone and there's one nurse holding one leg, there's one nurse holding another leg and they're chanting at me, cheering me on that I can do it while staring down at my plastic vagina. <laughs> And Mike is squeezing my hand so tight, and I'm screaming and moaning, and in my ear, I hear, all right, you're gonna let the baby's head come out a little bit. So in the room, there's also this plant nurse who's there to sort of supervise the situation, and she says, the baby, I think it's crowning, and that's my cue to push the baby out a little bit. But I'm only allowed to let it go out as much that the head pops out, and then I'm supposed to stop. So the head pops out, and the nurses, nursing students are screaming, push, push, and in my ear, the control room is screaming, pull, pull, because I'm not supposed to let it go. And so I'm just screaming from the sheer force of this fetal tug of war. And I'm like, ah, because I don't want to give it up to the students. And so we go back and forth and back and forth, and it feels like so much time has gone by. And finally, in my ear, I hear, all right, you're going to let the baby go. Mike, when the baby comes out, you're going to see it, and you're going to pass out on the ground. And then they say, cue blood. So I'm also lined with tubes of fake blood, and there's a nurse in the room that's supposed to push a button to let that go out when the baby comes out. So I let the baby out, and I wail, and Mike goes down, and 
Everyone starts rushing to him because they want to know what's going on. And this curtain reveals, and there's Robo Mike on the ground. So then they rush to Robo Mike. And everything's happening so fast that it takes me a moment to realize that I feel really wet. And then I'm like, oh my god, I actually shit the bed. <laughs> like real birth. <laughs> but I can't say time out or anything. This scenario is still going, so I have to just sit there. And there's no one around to help me at this point. And I look down, and they just left the baby on my chest. It's like lying there covered in KY jelly, flopped over. And I spend like a good five minutes just with me and my new baby just staring at it. It has this like fixed like grimace on its face, and its head could rotate 360 degrees if it wanted to. But as I was sitting with it, I, like, I softened up a little, and I decided to name it Susanna. So before anyone could come back over to me to make sure everything was OK, there was a voice over the loudspeaker that said, time is up for the encounter. Students, please re leave the room for debriefing. So I never actually knew what happened to me or my baby or my husband after that. All the students were asked to leave. And so I get up, and the blankets fall off, and the baby bounces to the ground. And in my ear, I hear, <gasps> and I look down. And I'm totally covered in fake blood. Like my gown is soaked in fake blood. The clothes underneath are soaked in fake blood. Uh, my skin is dyed from the fake blood. What happened was the tubes that were supposed to let all of the blood out onto the floor so that the nurses and doctors would rush towards me and help me were facing the wrong way. So all the blood poured back onto me. Now, I had about 10 minutes before I was going to give birth again and then again. So what they did is they set me up on this big diaper pad to soak up all of the blood for about 15 minutes. So I meditated there on that diaper pad, sort of replaying the events and everything that went on and trying to relive the birth in my mind. And I, I came to the conclusion that as I was pushing and as the baby came out and the artificial afterbirth came out, a little bit of my fear of babies also flew out with it as well. Not like all of it, but enough <laughs> that I was excited to give birth a second time and then a third time. And then I knew that when I went home, I could watch Look Who's Talking from start to finish. Thank you. That was Hillary Ray. Hillary is a Philadelphia dwelling comedian and storyteller and the host of the storytelling shows Tell Me a Story and Fibber. She's a New York City Moth Story Slam winner and was featured on the Soundtrack Series and How I Learned Podcasts. She was a 2011 artist in residence for Elsewhere Artist Collaborative in Greensboro, North Carolina. For more science stories, take a look at storycollider.org, where we have archives of the podcast and upcoming events. The Story Collider is produced by me, Brian Weck, Darren Barker, and Ari Daniel. The podcast is produced by Rose Avalith. Additional help from Brooke Williams, Lena Groger, and Justin D'Ambrosio. The theme music is by Ghost. Special thanks to Littlefield for hosting the show, and to all the actors who played Elementary Particles when I was in grad school. Thanks for listening. When we made our McDonald's spicy chicken McNuggets, you were praise hands emoji. Then we ran out, and you were streaming tears emoji. Now they're back, so you can be grinning face with sweat emoji. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. And get money mouth face emoji with two orders of crispy, irresistible 10-piece McNuggets. Spicy or classic for just $6. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.